What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Guliato Bango Boyle. You're now tuned with Edition Podcast. And like they always say, like and subscribe so I look cool. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Guliato Bango Boyle. Uh, welcome to Edition Podcast. This is episode number four. I got two very special guests in the building today. I have Sal and Abdi. They're from yeah. Top Figures. Uh, I'm gonna give, we're going to go a little bit over um, background about their entrepreneurship and e-commerce today. Uh, they're gurus at that. They're killing it. So I'm going to have them give them a little bit of background on them because they can only do better than me, you know? Yeah. No, appreciate you having us, man. Mm-hmm. We're super excited to do this. And honestly, you know, over the last, it's going to be our fifth, five, five years now. fifth year anniversary of just, you know, building Top Figure. And, you know, we started off as a community and like the vision of just really giving back and giving game. Uh, and just our journey of business you know we've done a lot of different things but mainly really building e-commerce brands you know we started off building websites you know uh we're an agency before and really just helping people setting up their websites and grew into just you know doing that for about a year and a half and you know transition from that to building our own e-commerce brands Mm -hmm. and from then on learned a lot of you know lessons in the business you know started off you know we've done a lot of different things you know but it's a journey and it it was a fun journey throughout the whole process but Mm -hmm. you know yeah we're here yeah Mm -hmm. okay awesome well for the people do not know who you are as a per individually you know where you guys from you know um did you go to school where'd you study and things like that you know give them a little bit back so they know who you are personally for sure yeah Yeah. let me start off okay so pretty much personally you know Mm -hmm. family refugees came from came from somalia Mm -hmm. here and you know i went to school in spring lake park high school and Mm -hmm. you know i've always been interested in computers really just you know building things and online and uh really you know at school you know we met at college okay. and we start you know we used to hoop together okay yeah. balls, man. Let's go. <laughs> hoop together at lifetime and really just you know we met you know i used to build a lot of projects online and mm-hmm. you know abdi was like always that you know avid just you know he introduced me to the whole social media wave you know i've just been somebody who's just kind of behind the scenes really building things online for clients and all that kind of stuff and we were mm-hmm. like yo let's start let's go into business together and let's just you know create a community and used to you know we got a little office in roseville and yeah. you know we just documented our whole process you know everything we used to just like record our you know client meetings all yeah. that i don't know if it was all okay. yeah, <laughs> <no, I'll, laughs> you know what i mean if that was even you know normal but we, we just used to just do, document everything yeah. and we started a podcast and just shared our experiences of what it was like being an immigrant entrepreneur and mm-hmm. so much people related to that in our you know uh, demographic and you know just followed along our journey and you know we documented our losses wins everything you know pivots in business all that and people yeah. just related to that and that was so important uh especially because the reason why we did this mm-hmm. was because you know um we never had that person to relate to in business that was the same you know dem- young or you know black founder that we could relate to Mm -hmm. so we were like let's be that person for others yeah you know and because we couldn't see that and you know our parents weren't in business we never really had that role model yeah and we just you know went to so much networking events and just Mm -hmm. built up that you know uh um met so much other uh people colleagues in business now that you know mentor us and it's been it's been amazing but that's really my story your story okay gotcha what about you Abby? come on man (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so um, I went to Columbia Heights High School, yeah. not too not too far from here. Yeah, and you know, in high school, I just always I I had an internship, right? I had an internship at in like, high school. Yeah, so okay, it was it was through like this that. program called Genesis Works, mm-hmm. and where you get an internship. So I went through this um, internship at Medtronics, and it was like the nine to five life, right? So yeah. like I was dressing up, and I was seeing like the same thing every single day, and I just had a feeling like in my gut saying like. I, this is not like this is not for me you know mm-hmm. and there was nothing wrong with not it wrong there's with, people yeah. that make a lot of money doing that and that's when my entrepreneurship mindset kind of started building like my senior year in high school yeah and before what i was actually doing was i used to throw like high school parties you okay. know <laughs> so like i would charge like 15 to 20 dollars for people to come yeah and then like i remember one night after i think this was my last party that i threw it was like my senior year I think I made like three grand or something. Damn. And that was like, as an entrepreneur, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, de- like I made this happen. This is the money that I made myself. And that's when like it finally clicked, you know. And then freshman year of college, I was just looking at, you know, what businesses to get into. That's when the social media thing started. How do you market and all that. Mm-hmm. But 
that I think that was the moment that my senior year of actually making that I made this money like I earned it was because of me yeah. and this is my money so it's like that's what made me fall in love with entrepreneurship yeah. and like literally tried everything under the sun in entrepreneurship <laughs> from, from selling shoes to yeah. literally trying to sell um products to sell like everything we tried it the yeah. first year we had i think a year of just, yeah, just trying really, different man. things you know from real estate to marketing to uh wholesale ev- everything fix everything phones, fix phones, everything everything, like, everything we, we tried like, like hustling you know yeah and the thing that clicked for us was on um, e-commerce because our first um, funny story. Our first store we ever started was yeah. we sold uh, these strapless bras. <laughs> it was a funny story how yeah. it worked, you know. So it was like these strapless bras that were going viral at the moment. Yeah, and like us not knowing we didn't know like how to do it properly we ordered like a thousand units from china (laughs) and like it came and then like the product like we sold like half of it we made our money back and stuff but then like we ended up getting like a a size that was unpopular and we just sitting with a bunch of bras you know so that was like our big lesson and then yeah so that's a little bit background on me you know a few things i like to do is just like I'm more so of just like visionary. I like to think like, yeah. where are we a year from now, two years from now? And a lot of people just think in the moment mm-hmm. and they make decisions for the moment, the moment yeah. not where are you going to be a year from now? Where are you going to be two years from now? And yeah. things we did three years ago are just now paying off. Wow. But are you going to be patient, patient enough that, that long? Yeah. You know, That's good dynamic that you guys have there. You know, you're working in the background, doing your little computer <laughs> thing, you're out and about. So that's how I actually met these guys. Uh, there was a conference I was invited to by Yusra. Uh, um, I still have their hey, tag hey, here. Uh, I up. knew I wanted to keep this because I was <laughs> at that time I was thinking about starting a podcast. And I was like, when these guys got up there and speaking, I was like, yo, I like these guys. Some of the things that they're saying, I went through uh, the same thing. Their bra story caught my attention like crazy because uh, I brought them. Yep, yeah, I still got them on my hand today. It's these things that I bought, I'm pretty sure it's from Alibaba. It's, um, <laughs> iPhone 11 like case protector and iPhone 11 Pro, right? I'm like, yo. They're having a sale. There's a hundred of them, right? Yeah. So I got it for a hundred dollars, but I got a hundred. If I sell them for ten bucks, you know, a thousand dollars, nine hundred dollars yeah. profit. Yeah, profit right Yo, there. this is, this is it. Oh my god! Yes. I was about waiting for these things to come. Two, three weeks later, they're coming, right? Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I got an iPhone 11. Let me make sure. I always like to test my own product first so it works. It works because yes. I don't want bad customer reviews. Is what I'm frightened of you know yeah like because that ruins you someone mm-hmm. who doesn't know he's gonna be like oh yeah well boy oh, he sells Stay terrible away from thing. yeah get away from him. so that just ruins you so i was like let me try it on my phone i take it out put it on my phone and it doesn't fit on the screen at all mm-hmm. i'm like maybe i'm tripping let me grab the iphone pro one i thought my playing myself i thought my iphone was a pro i had the regular one mm-hmm. put that one on didn't work and now i'm sitting with products that i'm promoting on it, uh, on Snapchat, talking about, hey, I got ice. You know, stop going to Verizon. Stop going mm-hmm. to these guys. I got them for the low ten bucks. You know, <laughs> yep. no, these people. Some people hit me up, but to this day, I still got a hundred of them upstairs. You know, so Damn. that's, that's <laughs> yeah. when you guys told me that story. I was like, it just clicked. Got to right? get the right right size. Ordering mm-hmm. samples is huge. Samples. That's what I should have done. So it's huge. But going off a conference, you know, for the people that maybe later down the future, like you're saying, you're a visionary, right? You mm-hmm. want to have your own. Let's say they want to throw their own event, right? Mm-hmm. Creating uh, even though this, I just want you to touch a little bit on this. Create yeah. your own conference. You know how? What goes into that, oh. man? That people don't see. You know, people oh just see goodness. the speakers, the fun, and this. But mm-hmm. tell yeah. us about the it whole was, thing. Just giving a little summary. Of it was Kringle. crazy. Um, I think we took about a month and a half planning it. Yep. Mm-hmm. And like, just you know the last week getting close to it was probably the most hectic one because like there's things that you don't even think about like audio you know like room temperature (laughs) like is it gonna get too hot in here is it gonna like tables how many chairs do we need how many what time is the speaker gonna come are we over so all these things that go into it Mm -hmm. and you know one of the best things to do is hire like an event planner that has experience mm-hmm. doing these things, right? Yeah. Because they've done conferences. They and then ask for, you know, what did you do before? What type of events did you do? Yeah. And they will throw it, you know. And honestly, the biggest thing for us was like, it was an idea at one point. Like, mm-hmm. hey, let's throw the growth conference. Okay, what's this conference going to be about? Yeah. Okay, who we're going to have speak at? Okay, is it where? Where are we going to host it? Mm-hmm. And at the time, it was like. COVID is, we just reopened. Everything was opened back okay. up. So mm-hmm. all venues were like booked like crazy. Like we couldn't even find a venue until like December. Mm. So we finally found one. That was the biggest issue we went through. And um, 
you know, just went down and just started drawing ideas. Okay, we're going to have speakers about this. Okay, we know it's a minority-led conference. Yeah. And things just, one thing after the other, it's just fine and going. And then, like, we launched, um, we did a really, really good uh, launch campaign. And um, if you are ever doing an event, do a wait list. You mm -hmm. know, so what you do is you build the hype for the event. Mm -hmm. So we launched a wait list and we had a bunch of people get on the wait list. So we yeah. collected. There the, goes that party, what do you call yeah, it? Yeah. You know, <laughs> coming in, you know? <laughs> Because <laughs> um, so a lot of people yeah. would do is they would just say, "Hey, I have this event. Come show up." Mm -hmm. Okay, you're not gonna get as much sales because yeah. you just launched it. So here's the play that you know this is free game right here. Yeah, free yeah. Game. So what you do is you do a wait list and you collect their phone number and their email mm -hmm. and you just stuff that wait list. And then the day you're launching, you hit them with a you before you even launch it publicly, you hit everybody with a text message, everybody with an email. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this is going public in the next three hours. It might sell out, yeah. but you join the wait list you get early access yes, yes. that scarcity mindset people just you know mm. they, they get to buying it right away right away right away you know yeah so we did that that was actually one of the best things we did and we had a good launch yeah. and then just towards the end we started just selling more selling more selling the digital ones mm -hmm. and you know that's that's how it worked but the biggest fear at first was just like yo we've never done this we've never done a conference how's this gonna work mm -hmm. what's all these ideas play in your head when you're starting anything you talk your way out of it you yeah. know yeah commit first and you're gonna figure everything out that's fact <laughs> you got something to add to that that's a huge bit? like really uh, that's how we've moved in even in business too like we committed first we got the browser whatever figured it out mm -hmm. now we know what not to do okay cool it's just that where you learn from your experiences of failing mm -hmm. yeah. and it's never really failure it's just really a loss in the moment mm -hmm. but it's a lesson that you learn it's not really we don't consider it failure and that's a lot of things where people just when they get into business yeah. they fear that failure mm -hmm. but it's not really much of a failure you're gonna get it to a once you do fail you'll get to a point where now you know what to do and the connections or what you've learned can take you to another level. Mm -hmm. And that's where every time we look back, we're like, if all these lessons that we haven't learned or this failures we, we haven't gone through, yep. we wouldn't be where we're at where today. At so today, yeah. it's huge. Like yeah, you, you took that lesson and then look at you now. You're you're expanding, you're doing other things and you've mm -hmm. learned not what not to do. And it's just, you know, people just, like you said, talk their way out of themselves. Yeah. Like You right can't away. dodge failure. Yeah. You just can't. Mm -hmm. Fact, you man. just can't to dodge the, it. Listen, man. To, to the point where we actually will think we're doing something wrong if we're not failing. Yeah. Really, where we're like, okay, are we not trying enough, enough things? You know, like, are we not trying hard enough? And it's like to the point where we started being like, okay, now we're failing? Okay, cool. That means we're doing the right thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where we get that, because as an entrepreneur and you've done multiple things now, you're like, okay, now, nah, we didn't fail? Hold on a second. Nah, <laughs> something, <laughs> something not going on. Something not right. Something not right. right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's something like you, you just got to get over that, and then you'll get to a point where you just don't even fear it no more. Yeah. You know? Wow. Hey, that's... We could probably just wrap it up after that, man. <laughs> That's some good game, man. Yeah. So, hey, all the entrepreneurs, we all go through the same thing. Now, I mm -hmm. want to actually touch a little bit, you know, on, you know, what you guys do, you know, professionally, mm -hmm. right? Even all that is professionally, too. But mm -hmm. what you guys are known for, you know, the e-commerce platform, yep. you know, uh, for the people who do not even know what it is, right? Like, if yep. you came up to me probably a couple of years back, you're like, e-commerce, what the hell is that talking about, you yeah. know? What is e-commerce for the people that do not know out yep. there? What e is it? E-commerce is selling products online. You mm -hmm. know, some people sell digital products. Yep. Some people sell physical products. It's just a transaction of selling a product online, right? Mm -hmm. Amazon is the biggest e-commerce platform. They sell over 50% of all online sales so come from Amazon. Damn. So it's just, e-commerce is just, it's just the way of business, right? Mm -hmm. There's numerous of different ways like this. Drop shipping, there's mm -hmm. wholesaling, there's you have products in house, there's numerous of ways of just doing it. People just get when they hear the word e commerce, it's so big that yeah. it intimidates them. You know, right. if you're yeah. doing Amazon, this e commerce. So it's like just the way of business, you know. Mm -hmm. the and the biggest thing is really <clears throat> is everybody is partaking in it. If you ordered something on Amazon, you've mm -hmm. partaken in the play e in the industry. Mm -hmm. Right. If you ordered anything online, period, you've partaken in it. What we tell and educate people on is the things you're buying, mm -hmm. take a look at them you have the capability of selling that same thing yourself yeah. and having a piece of that pie there's nothing different and especially nowadays with the advancement of the internet mm -hmm. the playing field is level oh, so level. these corporations like you look at the Amazon targets and Walmart's of the world and all these companies and you're like man they're pushing so much product mm -hmm. but in reality there's nothing separating from you creating your own product mm -hmm. and putting it online yeah. And it's so much easier now, right? With things like Shopify, that you can 
get started with like for $29 a month, you can get started and set up your own site. And then you create your own product, you can start selling that to your own friends. You can get rich just off of your own friends, right? Mm -hmm. Selling that product and hyping that and create getting influencers and then running advertisements to get more customers in. But everything is much more easier now, right? Yeah. It's just a matter of just looking at it from being a producer, not just a consumer. Hmm. Too often, our generation, we're just constantly buying things. That new shirt, that new this, like, okay, it's cool to buy all these things, mm -hmm. but if you don't have any ownership, you don't have your own brand, yeah. you're just making other people rich. rich you're not yeah. making yourself yeah. rich, right? Yeah. You, it, it's now easier, more, it's more easier than ever to create your own brand now. You could work with suppliers, put your own logo on it, hustle your own products to your own friends and family. Mm -hmm. Like, just from dumb alone, you can get rich. So it's like, just do that you know what i mean yeah mm -hmm. wow that's awesome um so the next one is for the question that i have is someone finding a product you know yeah there's so many products out there you know exactly how does one go about finding a product or should you just hop on you know like back in the days we had the little fidget spinners or something yeah you know? uh, like what's the best way to go into finding a product uh, I, for oneself well the biggest thing i always say is find the evergreen niche right mm -hmm. what i mean by this for instance you could be in beauty you mm -hmm. know there's so many new trendy beauty products but when you're under the beauty umbrella you can switch from one to one like home decor goods there's always new mm -hmm. products that are trending in that area so just pick a niche that mm -hmm. evergreen and you're passionate about you have some little bit of passion because mm -hmm. there's going to be some products that just die out or some mm -hmm. products that are hot right now right but they not yeah. be hot you know a few months from now so once you pick that niche you have the data because e-commerce is a data-driven game, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm under the niche of beauty, right? I sell this product and it went insane and I have all the data of all these emails and all these customers. Now, the moment I'm launching another product under the same umbrella, mm -hmm. all I got to do is just use those emails to retarget okay. these type of people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I already wow. have the data on them. So I always say start with just one niche and then find about 10 products and then find which ones are doing well right now. Yeah. And there's different ways to check like how often they're selling, how are people, you know, what are people saying about this product? Mm -hmm. And then the biggest thing in e commerce right now is creating your own content right? Jeez, creatives is huge, huge right now you know you'll see a lot of people doing you know e-commerce the unethical way of just stealing videos from other people and just yeah. running ads that's not a long sustainable way yeah i always say order the product do your own Thank you know you, yeah. content ads you could even send that video to influencers you could do it and there's some websites now that i think you pay like 40 bucks or something they'll build it for you the ad itself you wow. know i forgot the name of the website but there's websites you can literally look up and they'll create the ad video for you too mm -hmm. so it's like there's like no excuse now, no excuse much, no, the game's pretty much too, you know uh, it's getting there's it's, like it's just becoming too easy for everybody to get in the market mm -hmm. and what that means is a lot of competitors Competitor, now, right yeah. there's a lot of people that just start but they don't last you mm -hmm. know so every time you do it you just got to think longevity like mm -hmm. you got to think a year from now you got to think two years from now mm -hmm. because every time we start a brand we're thinking long term so we're taking the longer way not like the shortcut, shortcut way yeah. of just taking shortcuts and stuff no you got to have your product looking good you got to have good customer feedback mm -hmm. you got to have influencer set up you got to have your social media right you got to have all these things that seem small now mm -hmm. but like a year from now all that that's, that's like what made it get to the next level and, and to add to that consumers are getting smarter right Way especially smarter. you the biggest thing to really understand when you're creating a brand or anything like that mm -hmm. is to make yourself the consumer a lot of times when people build products Ooh. and stuff it's like would you buy your own what you're selling <laughs> yeah. honestly a lot of people overlook that <laughs> yeah. they're over here like just hustling on a product or selling something that they themselves wouldn't buy yeah you have to take it into perspective like you yourself are the best customer to really just you know what i mean like critique like okay all right if this website looks spammy or scammy like would you buy from you that buy from nah, yeah. you're gonna buy from a trustworthy site mm. you got buttons all over this like <laughs> buy now this that 25 percent of all this type of stuff like flashing in your face yeah. are you gonna buy from that nah no, absolutely not you know? trustworthy. so yeah. just make yourself the consumer you'll figure out what you need to do from just really looking at that mm -hmm. and backtracking your steps man make yourself the consumer so I hope, yeah <laughs> write that down man if you're watching this write that down um you touch a little bit on it you know uh i went to school for marketing right so understand that a lot of businesses you know all these big businesses they spend millions of dollars on marketing yeah. right mm -hmm. so 
you touch a little bit like you know you use your social media and now there's marketing contact how important is marketing when it comes to your um oh, you know your product I, I always say this marketing is the heartbeat to every business mm -hmm. without marketing most businesses would not even be around you mm -hmm. know they would die right away yeah so like with that being said now you probably are going to have competitors in the industry mm -hmm. so like what makes you different mm -hmm. for instance there's this one brand i always like to use the example this girl she sells t-shirts in a bottle like mm -hmm. she's the first to do this. It's yeah. called like t-shirt in a bottle. Okay. But it's just a normal t-shirt that's that has a quote on it. Mm -hmm. But what makes it so different is she literally puts it in a water bottle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she's been like scaling like crazy. And mm -hmm. that's what makes her different. Yeah. So find something that'll make you unique and mm -hmm. you could go viral with on the internet. Because now with the internet, they're always looking for what's different, next, what's yeah. next, especially mm -hmm. with TikTok. Mm -hmm. There's so many products just going viral on TikTok because it just makes something different, you know? Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, just get creative. Marketing is about creativity, right? Yeah. And get ideas. And like for her to, like, I, didn't, I would have never thought of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. T-shirt <laughs> in a bottle, but like now it's like going like insane, you know? I just want to know how she got the t-shirts in the bottle. In the oh, bottle. Wow. Like, there's, like, there's, like, there's like so many questions that fly around that you're like, how, yeah. did, how did it get in the bottle? Mm -hmm. That's actually a cool brand. I like what they stand for. Okay, mm -hmm. let me get it, mm -hmm. you know? So things like that. And marketing too, the second most important thing, and a lot of people don't do this as much, is everyone goes after the big influencers, right? Mm. Influencer marketing is huge right now. Everyone's running after the ones yeah. that have 5 million followers, 10 million followers. Mm -hmm. Those might not get you sales. Yeah. <laughs> like, just because someone has a lot of followers, mm -hmm. they don't know how to make money from their followers. Or, or their followers are not engaged. Are not, not engaged, engaged yeah. you know? Or their followers might not be your right consumer. Like, let's say you have a beauty product and you you see a guy that has 15 million fitness followers you think any of those people are going to buy your product probably not, probably not yeah. so i always say go after micro influencers mm -hmm. and these are the ones that are up and coming and they're building their brand they usually have more of an engaged yeah. audience yeah. because mm -hmm. they're responding to everyone they're talking to every everyone back they're responding to every comment they're responding to every dm so the people are more likely to buy from them because they, they respond, you know, they feel yeah. more connected with them. So we've been leveraging micro influencers for the last two, three years now. And it's been like our secret weapon mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't even take advantage of. Everyone's wow. running after the big influencers big influence when mm -hmm. there's all these other ones that'll even take a free product and mm -hmm. promote it for free and they'll bring 30 sales, you yeah. know? Wow. So that's, that's a big one that, especially if you're at the start, start with that right away. Anything to add to that one? No, that's huge. Literally, like the influencers is big, like micro, you mm -hmm. know? I talk about TikTok. You know, I was first hesitant, right? At, yeah. like, I was like, TikTok, I feel like it's a little kid's game where they're, you know, they're dancing. They're mm -hmm. doing something crazy, you know? How does one, I guess, you? I think you guys have a TikTok, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does one get over, not a fear, but it's like that mentality. It's like this platform is for children you know what i mean like why would i go on it these people yeah. are dancing and doing something crazy mm -hmm. like how does one get over that you no know, if you have any advice for no yeah. it's huge because like i've been leveraging it late late as of recent and mm -hmm. videos are getting viral like and honestly the biggest thing that i've noticed is when you it's the same thing as instagram where you know it's bite-sized information we're mm -hmm. going into an age of people want to consume you know, information in bite-sized, mm -hmm. you know, like format. TikTok is in an entertaining way, right? So mm -hmm. it's like shorter, it's entertaining, you know, it's mm -hmm. simply like just, you just, you know, dancing and just, you know, like, information <laughs> of that, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, honestly, and people find that entertaining. Yeah. And honestly, you know, like that is much more beneficial nowadays. Like people don't want to listen to longer form pieces of content no more, yeah. right? It's getting to a point where, we hold our intention span mm -hmm. is not even that much of a goldfish anymore. Like where it's like, what is it? Like three seconds or something? Yeah. Like seven seconds? It's something goldfish like that. Got yeah, go goldfish got a longer, you know, attention span. So when you create content for TikTok, mm -hmm. You know, just play with it. Just really just like use those trends. Like one thing that has been working for me, every mm -hmm. video has just been getting over two, three hundred thousand views. Mm -hmm. I've just been going from trends mm -hmm. and just putting, twisting it into my own unique way, right? Mm -hmm. And conveying your story. When people hear your story mm -hmm. and you just chop it up into bite-sized pieces of like, okay, this is what I used to do and like, here are my losses, here's what I've, you know, like learned. Mm -hmm. People, that's been really what's going viral because people can relate to that. Yeah. That's the audience on TikTok, 
Okay. It's a lot of younger audience, of course. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. the thing is, though, the Walmart, all these brands are tapping into that right. because these younger audiences mm-hmm. are influencing their parents, influencing exactly. the older generation. Now there's more millennials popping onto the TikTok fla- platform now, yeah. and it's honestly just amazing. So. Yeah, you we can't dodge it because Instagram is now using Reels, mm. and they're just trying to, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They're trying to catch on that wave. So it's we, like the bite size is super important because a video that would take you thirty seconds to get all the information, or would you watch a thirty minute video to yeah. get the same amount of information? Yeah. You know, like do this, this, so this, and this. People yeah. are just literally now attention spans so short. They're yeah. just going with that. This is the question that just came out my mind going off of that. You're touching on, you know, like WalMarts and bigger brands are tapping into these younger kids mm-hmm. do you how, how do you feel about marketing to younger generations like little kids to try to influence their parents to buy something they're like yeah. that just came to my mind right now i'm just like is that, <laughs> is that ethical is that correct or how, <laughs> is like, that what's going on no because if you think about it nowadays consumers are you know becoming younger and younger and younger right mm-hmm. so traditionally a lot of times where now the average age everybody has to be online especially with covid it pushed everybody online even older generation now they're using their phone you go into a restaurant you gotta scan your phone they're not even looking at they have to you know what i mean like they're not even using paper menus no more yeah all that kind of stuff so we're now being forced into a digital age now no matter what your age is yeah so with that being said you got even grandmas and grandpas on social media, on, social media, <laughs> on TikTok doing dances and all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And and because it's like that's the new way attention, right? Yeah. That's where the attention is at. So when it comes to this younger demographic, mm-hmm. they're influencing the older generations to basically go onto these platforms mm-hmm. and then utilize it. And then honestly, if you know how to move with it. You're gonna be, you're gonna grab the most attention because a lot of people just wanna consume the content. Mm-hmm. Very rarely do people go out of their way to create content in general, period. That's one thing I've been realizing because so many people talk themselves, like we said earlier, out of doing mm-hmm. things in entrepreneurship and content creation, period. Yeah. So when you just hop on the platform and you just test different trends and all this kind of stuff, you'll see yourself really gaining attention, gaining all these types of followers yeah. from Jump Street. So never t- talk yourselves out. Talk of it. Yeah, they used to call it analysis paralysis. Analysis where I work. Yeah, and, and I used to have a lot of that, man. So, but you touched a little bit on it. You said COVID nineteen, right? I watched mm-hmm. one of you guys' podcast, which you're going to touch a little bit on. You know, a little mm-hmm. bit down the line here, um, is adapting to your environment. Yes. How important is that in the business world? You know, because I'm kind of like sometimes stern. Like I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. doing this this way. This is the only way I know how to do it. You know, mm-hmm. how does that? How it's, guys probably, it's probably one of the most important skills to adapt as an entrepreneur because mm-hmm. change is going to change regardless whether you like it or not. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's apps that we use daily now that didn't exist 10 years ago. Yeah. You know, like 10 years ago, it was probably weird to stay at someone else's house. Yeah. Airbnb. You know, and now Airbnb is just like normal. Like <laughs> yeah. we travel, we're like, oh yeah, we're going to use Airbnb. We're not even going to do hotels, you know? Yeah. 10 years ago, it was weird like weird getting in a stranger's car, picking you up mm-hmm. if it was not a cab, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So change is going to happen regardless. And if you decide to not adapt, you're just going to get left behind. Left behind. You know, so it's super important to adapt and to understand understand what's coming before it comes Mm. that's the next part right what's this how do you do that so it's like understanding i always look at who's always innovating for instance apple they're always innovating amazon they're always innovating Mm -hmm. so why what are they doing that we're not doing right Mm -hmm. for instance when apple's come out when apple came out with like their new their new little air tag things that you can put in like literally track your kids and stuff they're doing all of these for a reason you know so i just look at them type of trends and and i'm like okay they're doing this now. Okay, what's next? Why are they mm-hmm. tracking? Why are they? Why? Why? Why am I gonna pay ninety nine dollars for four little trackers? Okay, <laughs> yeah. what's been going on? Okay, so all these things. Because you know, these, just, and that's a good point. Because like these companies <laughs> harvest data or like a lot of consumer data, mm-hmm. and then to you know to go from there consumer behavior is where to really see what's going on mm-hmm. and honestly you can see it in your friends family and mm-hmm. see like what are they doing what are they oh you're ordering your groceries every single day okay mm-hmm. all right you're not going to the grocery store no more mm-hmm. oh you're you know <laughs> what i mean you're doing you know what i'm saying like you're ordering your stuff like sent to you like you know like people aren't doing 
what was before mm -hmm. it's just completely different like if you look at just the last five to ten years mm -hmm. the way of life has completely shifted yeah. so if you just simply just step back and pay attention that's how you can basically you know catch on to these trends and these and really see, even innovate and see what's going on and you know, how can I adapt this to my business? Okay, I see that, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? There's these hacks where people are like, okay, oh, I'm using Tinder to basically use it for my business now to just, you, people are <laughs> posting it, posting their business <laughs> on Tinder and using it to swipe like candles. Yeah. I seen this dude that did that. There's and dudes like, that market boats on Tinder. Yeah. They're marketing their boat on Tinder, yeah. whether you want to book their boat and stuff. Boat. You know what I mean? This is crazy what's happening. And that's one of the big reason why we launched our app, our yep. restaurant app, Tavolo, it's because the dining experience is so dinosaur. It's so old school and the way it's done and everything. Like now it's finally becoming normal to do the QR code off the table. Yeah. When we were working on this project for like the last year before it was happening, you know? Yeah. So it's like innovate, but always be knowing what's coming next. You mm -hmm. know, just study where the market's heading. Study what's upcoming. Okay, why is it? How, how often are people using their phones? Okay, is depression going higher now because of phone usage? Okay, is that a problem I can solve? Yeah. Like one of my friends, he, he started an app called Better You. Now he's solving, you know, people getting on their phones too much. He helps you. Like it'll be an app that reminds you, hey, talk to your mom now instead of like <laughs> yeah, being on crazy. social media, you yeah, know? Yeah. So things like that. So just study, look at the trends, see where things are going. And if you could solve a problem within that, yep. you'll, you'll, you'll be good. Do you think we're becoming robots then going that way? If we keep making our lives easier? Like, you know, no one's going to the grocery store no more, right? Yeah. It's like, are we becoming dumber or are we because of the, you know, whatever was being built is making us life easier? That's a catch 22. I think, me personally, mm -hmm. I just think that we're removing the mean, the, the, redundant tasks out of our life and mm. focusing on things that we really want to be passionate about and doing things that we really want to do. Mm. I think it's, shift, especially the way of work, that's mm. shifted. Yeah. Nobody's really going to, nobody has really, you know, it's going back to the old way of working, a cubicle, all that. That's changed. Everybody's yeah. hustling different. Working from doing, home is working like from normal home. now. Mm -hmm. Before, you know like, I mean? companies used to think you're unproductive like you're working, yeah, from yeah, you're working from home. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I remember one of my cousins, he works at a big corporation. He would, like, request work from home sometimes, and they used to just be like, oh, no, that's so unproductive. Yeah, like, yeah. we don't even know what he <laughs> And then now it's like Coach everybody's changed. working from home, yeah. you know? So it's like just adapting. So yeah, me personally, I think that that's really going to, it's changing, it's making us more focused on what we really want to do. I think mm. that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, I think, I think what's happening is like innovation is moving fast and we're moving at a f very fast pace, but at the same time with us moving this fast, there's also going to be a lot of problems that's going to occur mm -hmm. that you can solve. You, can you know, solve. so it's yeah. like more yeah. opportunities than ever now yeah. to become an entrepreneur. Because as a human race, I think we could always adapt. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like we've always adapted from all, I know there's a lot of horrible things happening in the world, but I just think that entrepreneurship is the best blessing for these problems because as entrepreneurs, we're always thinking of solving problems, bringing people together, mm -hmm. figuring out how we can connect people together, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So I really think that we're just going to be better off as a society. Social media and all this just exposed our problems. That's mm. all it did. It just mm. exposed our weaknesses. And then now it's just plentiful for people to solve, solve it. Some. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Uh, this one, you know, these last two questions on this aspect, you know, is uh, one is motivation. You know. Yeah. You know, some people when they first start off, they mm. they get this question. They get, you know, they're they're excited. You know. Yep. Oh my God, I'm about to go crazy. You know, I'm about to sell the most shoes in the world. Mm -hmm. But then they hit that the real world, you know, you get yeah. punched in the face. Mm -hmm. How does one stay motivated? You know, cause you know, some people need like somebody pushing yeah. them. Some people got that internal thing, mm -hmm. but yeah. some, sometimes that dies out. You know, how, does, how do you guys the, stay motivated? The truth is you're not going to be motivated every day. It's mm -hmm. just with humans at the end of the day, there's days that you're, you're going to not want to do things. But I think mm -hmm. the most important thing is discipline. Mm. If you apply discipline to your life and you know you got to do that, regardless whether you're super motivated or like yeah. not motivated and you're that disciplined, mm -hmm. I think mastering discipline is probably one of the best skills as humans we can develop. Mm -hmm. Like discipline like is probably number one 
on you know the things you should focus on if you're just starting your entrepreneurship journey yep. number one you got to just read a lot learn a lot of information number mm-hmm. two you got to be disciplined if you can work on being disciplined mm-hmm. you will become successful as an entrepreneur for sure because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that are talented and they're gifted but they're not disciplined yeah. yep. so they'll be crushing it for a week and then their next week they're just right. lazy and that and then they're motivated again they just work off motivation mm-hmm. that's not it's sustainable. not sustainable it's, yeah. it's, it doesn't last mm-hmm. so the truth is you're not going to be motivated every day that's mm-hmm. just the human yeah. truth you know yeah. we go through things you know there's bad things that happen in our life there's moments you're motivated there's moments you're not so don't depend on being motivated every day depend on being disciplined every mm-hmm. day okay mm-hmm. that's huge and to add to that what i think the second thing is build a crew or people around you mm-hmm. who will constantly motivate you like let's say if we have a group a good group of support circle of entrepreneurs mm-hmm. that just do different things all of us do things separately mm-hmm. right yeah like we're you know somebody does this industry somebody does that and we're all crushing in all of our industries and then it's like hearing from somebody like yo i did this this month or this is what i did mm-hmm. you know i got this going i got that that puts you in a motivating environment I you're always design. yeah you, you, so surround yourself with people who are constantly just pushing you motivating you and then that is another way to stay motivated Mm. because it's hard there's Mm -hmm. days where i'm just like damn am i crushing it you know what i mean am i doing this right okay cool like this it gets hard i get a call yo 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 this is what i did i just did did, did." (laughs) okay Okay, all right let's go you know what i mean all right bet cool okay say less so it's like all right bet let's and then honestly traveling and doing things that constantly doing what you want to do mm-hmm and just removing the money from it yep. helps you also stay motivated too. Yeah. When a lot of times people put the pressure of, I got to do this every day and I don't really like doing it. It's like when you focus on what you're passionate about, you won't need to find the motivation mm. because you're just having fun every day. Fun doing, and yeah. then you make money from it. Oh, it's another plus. It's another plus. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and I tell this to people all the time, when you're starting entrepreneurship, have a guarantee income coming in at first, whether it's a yeah. job, whether it's, you know, you're doing Uber, you're li- whatever Uber. it is, have something to bring in guaranteed money so you don't depend on whatever business or side hustle you start yeah. to yeah, generate yeah, money right away. You're not going to make mm-hmm. money right away with most things you start. That's yeah, just the that's honest a, yeah. truth, right? You're going to go through a learning curve and then you're going to have some failures and then you're going to have your uptrend. Mm-hmm. So have some form of guaranteed income coming in yeah. so you can pay off your bills and you won't be stressed Stress, yeah. but also put in a lot of time into your hustle until mm-hmm. it pays you double what you're making what? from whatever um mm-hmm. guaranteed income then you could quit yeah. but like honestly if you just follow those rules and you don't put too much pressure on yourself because there's people that just think they could just start entrepreneurship with zero dollars and money's just going to be flying in like water it yeah. doesn't work don't. like that you know <laughs> no. and that's that's just the honest truth you there might be people on the internet lying but yeah. the truth is that's not how that's it works how it and works. you just have to really put in the work and just pick something and stick to it that's another thing yeah. focus is so huge it's like crazy focus mm-hmm. is like huge because you might want to start Amazon, then you might want to start drop shipping, then you might want to get into real estate, then you might want to, you know, doing a hundred <laughs> different a shiny, things. No, shiny, shiny object syndrome, object syndrome yeah. and like you're running around like uh, 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 a rat, and you you you're never gonna pick anything, you know. So yeah. just pick one thing and just stick oh. through it, you know. Just mm-hmm. stick through the learning curve, stick through the grind, stick through the bad times, yeah. and it will pay off. Man, that's crazy. And then one one other thing I would add on to that too is uh, that's I recently started doing. Cause I used to think it was lame. That all, all my you know my managers working at the time were like, "Yo, write it down, you know, write it oh, down and then check big. it." Out. I'm like, "Yo, it's in my head. What I gotta write it down for, <laughs> yeah. right?" When I when I went to Target and bought a whiteboard and started writing what I'm gonna do for the day, uh-huh. it made me feel more productive. When I you know erase it off, like yeah, oh yeah. I did that or I wrote it, you know checked it off instead of trying to remember it. Because I used to think like yo my brain is like the best thing in the world. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna remember it and I'm good on that and I'll forget something. And I'm like damn what was that again? Oh. But. Get a whiteboard or, or even use gold school. Use a pen and paper. Or and we have notes on our phone. Yeah, notes on the yeah. phone. You better. I a know checklist you got a phone. is important. I actually yep. make one the night before. Night before. So the next the day. Next day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. That's, that's big. That's writing it down because you visualize it and then your brain can. You're helping your brain yeah. speak into existence. It. Yep. So uh, this is the last one for that. I know everyone always talk. I got mentorship. This and that. You know. Mm. Um, how important has mentorship been in your guys' uh, role thus far? And yeah. also how 
how does one go about finding a mentor? You know, mm -hmm. like let's say, yo, that's my, you know, that guy's doing something I want to do. I'm, I don't know how to approach this person, ask for mentorship. Yeah. So like, how, yeah. how do you guys do that? How, um, when we first started, what we were going to like so many networking events through mm -hmm. the there's an app called Meetup, mm -hmm. and you could just go to a lot of these events. And you know, before we we just were just looking for a mentor to just mentor us, but then we found that wasn't really effective because mm -hmm. someone doing you know uh, selling life insurance and he's crushing it. And that's not the industry I'm in. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it's like the way we found mentors in our space was I literally was just looking at people who are crushing it in the space and they could be your age. They could even be younger than you. You know, mm -hmm. so mentorship has no age mm -hmm. as long as someone has the knowledge and the experience. Yeah. So we found someone on the internet and I just DM them. I said, Hey, you know. I mentor what, what would it cost I, I paid the fee and they, they sh just showed me the blueprint mm -hmm. you know but you could find some for free um going events you know linkedin is pretty good yeah. instagram DM. just don't be scared to ask because mm -hmm. too often we have too much pride and mm -hmm. we're like man That's i don't want to get mentored by someone <laughs> yeah. like who's, who do they think they are you yeah, know I'm, yeah. I'm good enough i think i'm pretty good mm -hmm. you know and the pride gets in the way mm -hmm. of your success yeah. you know me i have no pride i i'll learn from anybody if yeah. anybody Everybody has the answers I'm looking for. I'm I'm gonna sit down, take notes. Yeah. Uh, no pride, you no know. No pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And another thing, really, is like if you don't if you don't have like the money to offer to pay for mm -hmm. a mentor, mm -hmm. what I would suggest is have some sort of skill set or mm -hmm. something to offer the mentor, mm -hmm. because too often a lot of times people will ask and then just want to seek something in return or like they'll be transactional based and like really just have something to offer. Like for mm -hmm. us, we offered our skill set. Mm -hmm. So I used to be really, really good at building websites. So I offer to for my mentor. Or, hey, I'll build you a really nice website. I can get it going for you. This is what I I won't charge you nothing. Mm -hmm. Teach me how you did this, this, and this. Yeah. Boom. And that was simple. Like that's how I really got my mentor. And then it was just value for value. Value, yeah. You know? So if you don't, if you're looking for a mentor, have something to offer, pay, mm -hmm. or just go to these networking events. Meetup.com is huge. Mm -hmm. That helped us. We went to that for over a year. Yeah. We went to four like, events a week. Yeah, we <laughs> went to single <laughs> week, like nonstop. And that, and like, sick of y'all. Like, <laughs> what y'all doing here? We was again? being seen everywhere, <laughs> everywhere in the city. Like yeah. every mm -hmm. event we were, we were in popping there. up to coding events, yeah. yoga yeah. events. Yoga. Like we would just pop up and people would, would be like, Literally. we'd be the only young black like just entrepreneurs in that event and we would just come we'd learn from somebody, somebody when yeah. we were there we were getting we our went takeaway to the big was, events like yeah. we're in rooms of like cmo and metronics yeah. and these big people were in rooms shaking hands with them and just mm -hmm. just going to networking events not mm -hmm. being shy mm -hmm. and people can peep that you have like a drive mm -hmm. have some sort of drive if you're mm -hmm. not driven nobody's gonna want to help you period Oof. Man, that's crazy. That's awesome. Uh, just we're gonna wrap it up on that that subject, you know, on e-commerce side. But uh, what would you know? Top three things, you know, that you learned so far, or you can mm -hmm. even add a little bit more, you know, to the individuals coming and starting off. Mm -hmm. That you know, or maybe your younger self, you like, if I would have knew this, but I would be further ahead right. in a faster time. What are the top, you know, a couple of advice you would give someone starting off? Mm -hmm. That's big. Yeah. I would say, um, in terms of e-commerce, yeah, in car, yep. Mm -hmm. I would say number one, um. Pick a niche. That's mm -hmm. really big. Pick a niche and focus on that niche. You know, mm -hmm. um, another big thing is product. You know, mm -hmm. have a good product. You know, mm -hmm. you don't. You would not believe the amount of people that sell bad product online and mm -hmm. they don't last. Yeah. they'll be so selling a bad product, and once the first 10, 15 people start getting in, the chargebacks start running in, the business gets shut down. Yeah. So that's another <laughs> huge thing: finding a great product. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is master the skills of advertising mm -hmm. you know master the skills of running ads because the moment you pay for ads money comes back so mm -hmm. i spend a dollar i get three back i spend a dollar i get four back you mm -hmm. know master that skills yeah mm -hmm. those would be the three things i would say yeah and to me in terms of like you know you mentioned like the uh business side of things really mm -hmm. the biggest thing is you know for me was like mindset if you mm -hmm. don't have the proper mindset to even do anything really just for yourself or even are believe motivated or believe in yourself you're really gonna not do accomplish anything mm -hmm. so number one focus on building your mindset because nothing will work it took us almost like two years to mm -hmm. develop our mindset mm -hmm. first and foremost because you may have all the skills but if you don't have the right mindset it won't work and just to add Period. on to that just to add on to that before yeah. we go on your second thing is we didn't come from 
a backgrounds of mm-hmm. families that are motivating us, you yep. know, mm-hmm. and that and it's not their fault. You know, right. they yeah, come man. from a place where you know, go to school, get a job, <laughs> boom, yeah. a war torn country. They come you know? here, they're just so like, it's like I don't. It's not their fault. So it's yeah. like there's some kids that grow up, their parents are entrepreneurs, so they yeah. grew up with their p- family pushing them to entrepreneurship, their yeah. family telling them, hey, this the ropes showing them all the so we didn't have that Mm -hmm. so to work on our mindset was so big because the belief pattern like to believe you can do something is big enough already that's already you know there's there's so much things that we kind of think we could do it but you don't believe it like you actually have to like no doubt believe that you can do it to even Mm -hmm. achieve it you know before you achieve you must believe yeah you know like that (laughs) without no doubt you know so i just wanted to add that that's huge really like that so that was one big thing working on our mindset was number one Mm -hmm. number two i would say to be honest it's have a core group of people around you that'll help you Mm -hmm. really believe in yourself or if you need that really just if you can't believe in yourself first and foremost you need to cut off the bad negative Mm -hmm. people Mm -hmm. because that's hard people around you are going to constantly tell you no don't do this you know this is not gonna work or all this kind of stuff like that was the core things for me like Mm -hmm. if you don't that and and honestly once you get rid of those two things and you are have a control over that Mm -hmm. anything you do you could sell toilet paper coconut water anything you would be successful no matter Mm -hmm. what you know so that's the biggest thing like you know take away lesson like honestly like if i had known that early on to just eliminate those things right away Mm -hmm. I just that's that's one thing I would say to my younger self. Okay, awesome. So that's that for that uh, segment. Now we're gonna go back to they got a, <clears throat> these two individuals got a podcast. You know, mm-hmm. just like what I have here. Uh, I was watching some of their videos and I'm just like, damn man, <laughs> where are these guys finding these individuals? They got someone that's yeah. got you know things in Walmart and you know in Target. A guy who started a a car dealership, you know, brokerage, and mm-hmm. overall, overall, what made you two start uh, want to start a podcast? <laughs> Uh, yeah, just that's good. That's yeah, the, one of the biggest thing was to, you know, podcast helps you start those conversations with yep. these people. You know, mm-hmm. most of the people, we, we almost all of them, we have relationships with now. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's that you learn more about them while you're on the podcast, mm-hmm. and it helps you establish that relationship. Another thing is just to share the game with our people that mm-hmm. you probably wouldn't hear these stories normally. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So how could we be that bridge between? these people and the people that were from you know the mm-hmm. how could we be the middle ground and that's what that's why we started the top figure community mm-hmm. and to create dialogue really to be honest just like when you're sharing stories with people mm-hmm. and they're from different backgrounds all this type of stuff you also get to learn like us we we learn so, so much, much from these people mm-hmm. that we're just giving game and they're just like game after game after game and we're just sitting there you know okay all right <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. you know what, what i mean and like we're learning so and it just allowed us to basically be like you know hey we got to share those and just like how you are you're mm-hmm. doing the same thing and really it's you know being true to really what you are and your vision and mm-hmm. your your the ability to convey you know like game to people who look like you and also like you were saying you said something before we got on this you were mm-hmm. like that way nobody has no excuse when people come yeah. around and they tell you hey like you didn't get share the game with me mm-hmm. they got no, no excuse. excuse like right. you yep. You gave you had you taught you got all the game mm-hmm. and you delivered it and you, that now that it's was up to it. them. You know, it's I want to them. wash my hands of your you know excuses. So mm-hmm. that's exact that that's awesome. Now you know me starting off. You know I was like, man, how am I gonna find guests? You know to come on these shows yeah. and who the heck am I gonna hit up? So mm-hmm. first I started looking at my circle. I'm like, okay, ah, I gotta get a key on here. Everyone wants to talk to him. Mm-hmm. You know I gotta do this and that. Um, how do you guys personally go about? I have a, I have a good. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's a great point. Really, to be honest, mm-hmm. you want to figure out who you really want to have conversations and dialogue with, right? Mm-hmm. That was the biggest thing for us because we were like, okay, we are conveying space, you know, game in our space, right? E-commerce and all that, mm-hmm. and we're like, you know, we want to learn a lot of game from these bigger people who have great, you know, who have accomplished a lot in this industry. Mm -hmm. So you create a list of those people and then you just reach out to them. You just say, hey, I'm trying to convey this, you know, this game to my, you know, audience and of listeners and Mm -hmm. and really just, you know, they'll respond back and they'll tell you like, And once you have one big person, then it leads to another big person. Then it leads to, and it's just a domino It's a numbers game. You just, you know, contact their managers or their people Mm -hmm. and then just email them and say, hey, I'm, this is what I've done so far. And if you can create, if you 
can add links of like what you've previously had yeah that's what we'll do like we'll we'll, we'll we, attach we had like this guest on we had this guest on and we think that your perspective would be really nice mm-hmm. for our audience yep. mm-hmm. and then they easily will say you know hey i, 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 could, I have some time this day this day you know mm-hmm you know perfect but that helps you a lot like really identify who you really want to get on the podcast no matter how big they are yeah do you know what i mean and just create that list and go down that you know and another big thing is a lot of these people are looking for content too yes mm-hmm. so we'll give them clips from our podcast and they'll go and share it with their audience mm-hmm. which markets our podcast our and yep. then markets them too yep so it's like a win-win it's for a way everybody. for you to grow your own brand too yeah like it's 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 really great yeah, that's that's crazy because uh, during my um, one of the first episodes that I did, and I think it was my cousin Nuni and Therese, I was like, a lot of people, you know, nowadays think that the only game that they get is from someone that is humongous, you know, yeah. that's huge. Mm-hmm. And I got kind of angry. I'm like, yo, I know someone down the street, or you might not know who he is, <laughs> Big but time. you go talk to him. I guarantee you're gonna learn something, maybe more than the, the than famous. Than what you would have from the famous. Guy. So I'm glad you said that. You know, mm-hmm. like you know, go and just who you want on there, and don't worry about like how. Big cloud or, or anything or mm-hmm. not like that just if you're providing Good. value and content and you're disciplined like we go back to earlier mm-hmm. it might not be in that time frame that you like but you will build that audience that's yes. engaging that Engage. is actually yeah. you can then you know start selling some sort of product that that you have for exactly. you know exactly and yeah. mm-hmm. i always say this most of these big influencers they mm-hmm. do not know how to sell to their audience yes like you might have someone that has 10,000 followers and they're selling a thousand dollar product to them mm-hmm. or this person that has 10 million followers and they can't even sell a product that's 50 dollars to their audience yeah. yeah you know so it's like the audience the people that you want to draw are they yeah. are they engaging are they or yeah. just someone that just follows you and never watches your content yeah, yeah. So. that's uh that's what chris was telling me ben he's like you know he does the wedding you know mm-hmm. the wedding the video weddings right mm-hmm. he's like yeah i follow this one podcast or they're youtubers somewhere mm-hmm. and they're like they got 10,000 active listeners right mm-hmm. in our minds you know when your video is 10,000 to me personally i get 100 i'm like yeah 100 mm-hmm. people saw it mm-hmm. but to like some of those other bigger videos they're like oh, i only got 10,000, you know <laughs> listeners and stuff but it's like he's like this guy made a tiktok he's like mm-hmm. oh mine is small or whatever but from those 10,000 active listeners He's making like 400k plus a year. Mm-hmm. See, see, that's yep. that's the crazy part. I was like, wow. It's, see, it's mm-hmm. not it's not about the numbers of people that watch. It's how many people that's going to be engaged. engaged yep. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the only to do the way to do that is provide value. Value. A lot of people skip that step. They're like, yep. oh, I just want the followers mm-hmm. without mm-hmm. providing game. You can't do that. Now, uh, this one. Cause I don't do it. Most of my interviews are in person, right? Yeah. Uh, I saw you guys' videos. Your most, the ones that I saw at least were online or they're like on a computer screen, right? Yeah, yeah This this is a selfish question for me. I'm like, okay, so if I got someone that I want to interview and they're in Montana, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm not gonna be flying or they're not gonna. Be, I'm mm-hmm. not flying them in. I'm not there yet, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How do you guys set up that? You know, what do you guys use? Or yeah. So that- our podcast studio, they just set it all up mm-hmm. and then. We send them like a Skype link, mm-hmm. and then they just gotta show up to the link, and we have all the back end set up okay. at the studio. Skype or Zoom, whichever one of those, you know, any web conferencing software, mm-hmm. you, it can plug into like your cameras and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. It's, it's once very dope. the studio guys know how to really do it well, but oh, yeah. I wish I could tell you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chris, look at that. It was like yeah. too fancy. But, yeah. mm-hmm. Okay, and then this one, uh, I saw one uh, another again going back to your episode. You had a shirt on, you know, had a big T, and then had a circle on it. You know, yeah. that's you guys, you know, brand. How important is branding, right, for yeah. um, for a comp- for a podcast or anything? You know, mm-hmm. how important yeah. is that? Yeah, branding is everything. It's like the more people see your logo, the mm-hmm. more they're gonna get familiar with it. So, yeah. like mm-hmm. when they see it randomly and you're on someone else's page, oh, I remember that logo. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a feeling. So how do you add that feeling with your brand as soon as you think of target you know what to think okay mm-hmm. as soon as you think of walmart you know what to think mm-hmm. so like it's not easy mm-hmm. but having you know the value connected to your brand or what do you want your brand to speak about what do you want your colors to be mm-hmm. so brand we could get real technical but, yeah, yeah. but the the biggest thing is branding is huge you know it's how when people see your logo what do they think what of they think so of. it's connecting that message us when you think of top figure entrepreneurship e-commerce community mm-hmm. uh value giving game mm-hmm. that's what we connected with our brand mm-hmm. yeah have the most eyeballs really just you know like every time you go somewhere really just like have that brand Mm -hmm. your brand 
be visible as much as possible. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. So I think that's how I wanted to wrap up uh, this today. Mm-hmm. But um, if you guys, I know we gave game for the e-commerce side. Is there anything that you guys would like to plug? Do you guys have another growth conference coming up in the future mm-hmm. here? You know, uh, I know you guys do some other online things too. Is there anything yeah. that you guys would like to plug? Uh, yeah, we have a full e-commerce program that mm-hmm. shows you A to Z, how to get started with e-commerce, mm-hmm. um, how to get into e-commerce, what to do with e-commerce. So yeah, if you're interested in that, just mm-hmm. go to the team top figure page message us or click the link in our bios yeah mm-hmm. i'm gonna i'm gonna have to make sure it's down there somewhere so you have a link to click <laughs> on appreciate so, you uh, any, no you're yeah good. pretty much really just like if you're this is a time to start your own brand yeah, whether you is coming up it's gonna know, be insane quarter it, four it's your time to really just the playing field is level yeah right mm-hmm. go ahead and start your brand and really just you know go crazy with it like yeah. it is the time now more than ever so Okay, I appreciate you guys coming on the podcast today, man. Great conversation. Mm-hmm. You guys are awesome. Hey, <laughs> make sure to look out for them, man. I'm gonna have all their links in their uh, their IGs below. Make sure to check that out if you're starting an e-conference. You know, don't fumble. Yeah. They, they can just <laughs> all the years of experience that they got already. Go to them. I hey, go to them and look at their links. At least take a look at it. You know, they yeah. give a lot of free game too. You know, that's what yeah. I learned mm-hmm. at the growth conference. So good guys to get in touch with. Um, appreciate you. Appreciate and my barbers, I'm mad at y'all where I'm wearing a hat today because <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I didn't get a cut. So um, I appreciate appreciate you guys being on here. Thanks man. for having keep us. Going crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna Thank keep you. seeing watching you guys from afar. Let's go. Probably gonna be in China, Africa next. So you know, <laughs> appreciate you guys tuning. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.